I'm Joe Satriani, and I'm going to show you 10 tips to make you a successful high guitar player. And uh, the first one is, uh, it's all about bending, bending in tune. This is a really simple one. You hit a note, let's say this one here, you drop down a little bit, and you bend up to it to try to get it in tune. But here are the mechanics of it. When you play that first note, make sure you're not pushing it down too hard, and make sure uh, that you're not pushing it side to side or anything like that. Drop down. Grab the neck, make sure the, the neck is sort of uh, uh, filling up this space right here and your, your fulcrum point for rotating your forearm is going to be right there. And you put your three fingers down on that string, two frets below the note you hit at the beginning. And bend up and try to get right there without any vibrato. And then maybe you can try adding different kinds of vibrato to your taste. Try it with other strings. Like that. Practice it down here all the way up so you know exactly what it's supposed to feel like and what it's supposed to sound like so you can bend it to it. Now, um, let's talk about playing stretching. When I started out, I played this thing here. And that's got a lot of stretch, a lot of hammer on and pull off. So let's say we scale it back and do a simple exercise to start. It would go like this. on that would be to stretch your first two fingers, your third, and do that on every string, and then experience it further up the neck. You combine that strength building with this kind of an exercise. And, and this, and this. So you've got basically there. One other thing I used to have my students do was the same kind of uh, hammer-on exercise where you didn't have to worry about what key you went like this. Just kind of get used to doing this. Just to build up your strength. Eventually, when you get around to playing uh, scales, you apply all this flutter strength and coordination and that kind of stuff and this to scale. This is a great uh, exercise for warming up. I'm not really warmed up right now, so uh, you'll get to see somebody warming up, right? <laughs> thing on the first four strings, the last four, combine them, the first couple of strings, sort of like a tongue twister for your fingers. It's a great way to warm up. I do this every night before a show. You can use any chord form to do it. You can use, uh, let's say, these diminished chords. Again, the idea is to stay loose, work away any kind of tension, don't play if it hurts, and uh, move with as much economy as you possibly can. That's the idea. Here's one that I used to like to do. Sounds wonderful, doesn't it? I learned this from a guitar player named Billy Bauer, a famous jazz player. And uh, it's a great way to work out picking and, uh, and fingering uh, that's slightly unusual, not, not part of your normal idiomatic you know, rock kind of styling. And when you do it on um, all the strings, um, it takes on a, uh, a whole new uh, sort of technique of its own because you find you have to lift up your fingers in a different way uh, because of the size of the string. And then as you go up, same thing. When you get to the top, we're halfway up, let's say, at the 12th fret, and you go backwards. This whole movement like this here is essential because 
it's really teaching you that there's lots of ways of getting fingerings uh, to work out, even though they may look awkward. Uh, there's a way of getting it together where if you practice it enough, it becomes uh, you know, natural to you. Now, to get out of the box of doing scales, and just two octaves and three octaves, uh, something that uh, I learned from uh, Lenny Tristano, the great Lenny Tristano, was uh, not to worry about the timing of when you're playing scales, but really just try to cover the entire neck. So, let's say if you're doing this E major, play all the way up as far as it could go and all the way down. Didn't worry about timing or fingering. The idea is to, to be able to look down at this neck and really see every key that you want clearly laid out with any number of paths available to you. Another way of doing that would be maybe, let's say if you're practicing an E, is to let that low E ring. the whole neck, just sort of zone in on a couple of those two and three octave fingerings that you find in a book. Uh, and then just try to replace a couple of notes. You know what I mean? And then once you find those same notes everywhere, then you time together. So it's just like learning how phrases and different octaves fit on the guitar, you'd have to do the same thing with the other note phrases. just practicing and not listening kind of style, which I don't really like.